Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. My name is Trisha Beckles and I welcome you today to the Voice of Hope. It is indeed a good thing to put your trust, your hope, your every confidence in Almighty God. And I really thank God for every privilege that he affords me to be here to share, to encourage, that we can meet together over this medium to really just remind ourselves and encourage ourselves in the Lord. In the midst of all that is going on around us, we can take heart and we can encourage ourselves knowing that our God is in control, knowing that in him is life eternal and God has made it available to us. God has also given us the strength God has given us the wisdom. He has made it available to us that we can go through this life victoriously, regardless of what is coming our way. It is indeed a good thing to put your trust and your hope in the Lord. And of course, for those who may be new to the program, we welcome you. We remind, we just want to let you know that this program is based on Psalm chapter 42, where David was able to encourage himself in the Lord in the midst of what was causing him to be saddened or depressed or downtrodden. He was able to say, soul, why art thou disquieted within me? He says, hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. And so we meet and we just encourage and I trust and I'm encouraged by the fact that we are able to take the word of God and see something inside there for us that can help us to hold on in the midst of all that life may bring our way, in the midst of all that life may threaten to bring our way. And so I just bless God for you today. Father God, I thank you today for this day. I thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. Mighty God, I thank you for being God and King, sovereign God, ruler, savior, healer, deliverer. God, you are all. You are the I am that I am. And indeed, God, there is nothing that is impossible for you to do. I thank you, God, for this good privilege of coming before your presence and coming before your people today, coming before the lives that you have brought within the sound of my voice, O oh God, that we can be encouraged and we can be reminded of your love for us. We can be reminded that indeed you are in control of everything that comes our way. Nothing happens on this earth that takes you by surprise. And God, we can rest in you. We can rest in your love for us. We can rest in the assurance, God, that there is nothing that is impossible for you to do. And so, Father, even now, I just bless you. As I commit this time into your hands, I commit your people into your hands. God, you know every need that is represented here today. And I pray, oh God, and I thank you even now for ministering to those needs, oh God. And we say, Lord, you just be glorified. And let only your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. I give God thanks today because the word of the Lord is, it's a new day. And in truth and in fact, we can look at this in so many different ways because it really is a new day. Of course, this program typically comes on at six in the morning when so many people are getting started with their day, the physical day, the actual day that we, we work with. But we can take it to see so much more and we can apply so many different meanings to the whole concept of a new day and what it represents for us and why we can take hope in God in the beginning, in the midst of this new day. So we thank God for the privilege of seeing a new day. The psalmist says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm saying to us, we can be glad for the advent of seeing a new day. Because first and foremost, not everybody who planned to be here today is here today. But God in his mercies has allowed us 
to see a brand new day. This day that you've passed, this way that you've come to, you will not pass it again forever because it's a new opportunity. And we'll touch and we'll get into it a little bit more. But I'm saying to us, it is a new day. And I want you to hold on to that because of the fact that it provides so much promise. It provides so much comfort. It can provide so much strength when we know and understand some more of the implications of it being a new day. And of course, in our local history, we had the advent of the election. And I take the time to extend congratulations to all the parties involved and to really pray God that this term, this four-year term, will see really the fulfillment of all God has ordained and all God has established for the island of Tobago through the work and the lives of those who have been elected to serve. And I'd also like to encourage even those who maybe were not successful to keep working. I don't think you would have presented yourself without having some kind of heart for the island of Tobago and the nation of Trinidad and Tobago by example. And I'm encouraging you, keep doing the work as God would lead you to. Even those who have gone before, who were there in the previous administrations, we just thank God for what you have been able to do. And we declare over our island, it is a new day. We don't have to continue along the way that we were going, but we can yield to the Spirit of God and allow God to be glorified in the choices that we make. We can allow God to be glorified in the things that we do, that through it all, People abroad, people within up our borders can see and know that there is something different about the people of Tobago because of the God that we serve. Because we have made a conscious decision to yield to this God. Hallelujah. So when we talk about then it's a new day, we spoke about it there on a more national level. But I want us to take it personally, to, to take it on a more personal level, because for so many persons, in the midst of all that you go through, sometimes in coming to the advent of a new day, we tend to be so focused on what has happened in the past. We tend to be so focused on what is happening at present that sometimes we miss the fact that we are going into a new day. If you think about it in the sense of coming from night until morning, a lot of times a new day starts with a period of darkness where there is not as much clarity as to what is ahead of you. And so you're a little hesitant because as human beings, of course, we tend to hold on to what we know. So even though maybe the situation may have been so hard, may have been so terrible, may have been not the best. Sometimes there's a reluctance to let it go because this is what we know. But I'm encouraging you today to embrace the possibilities. And I'm saying when you are in Christ, when you know and understand that God is willing and able to help you, to walk you through the transition of a new day, the transition to a new day. God who knows all the possibilities that the day holds is willing and able to walk you through. It is supposed to encourage you to put your hand in his hand and allow him to lead you. Not because you know everything, but you know the one who knows everything and you know the one who controls everything and you know the one who wants to bless you with every good thing. Hallelujah. That's the God that we serve. The beautiful thing about it, he tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. And if you remember, for those who have been 
part of Voice of Hope for the past few years, and I thank God for you. In our last episode, we spoke about the fact that God sees the journey. And so in the midst of the journey, you would have had your bumps, you would have had your hurdles, you would have had your obstacles. But even as you press on in the journey, God remains with you through it all. So when he says it's a new day, when you see the advent of a new day, when you see, as it were, the light, the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel, you know you're coming into something that is better than what you are currently experiencing or what you, are, what you have been going through. And so you're able then to hold on just a little bit longer. Just when you're tempted to give up, that light comes. And you're able to have a better perspective. You're able to have a clearer view because of God walking you through it. We said in that episode that sometimes you don't know how strong you are until strong is all you can be. You don't even know sometimes, for some people, they don't even know how they get up and go throughout a day. But they make it through to the end of the day. They realize, listen, the day has ended and I am not dead. I have not been destroyed by what has been happening to me. I have not been destroyed by what is happening around me. And you can take a step back and say, God, I thank you. Because it is only because of you. It is only God that has kept me. It is only God that will direct me. It is only God that will deliver me. And so your faith is strengthened in the midst. So that when the advent of a new day comes, you're able to step with confidence and say, I have been through so much. And so I'm able to handle whatever comes with this new day. And so I'm not saying that the new day is just full of perfection. I mean, we could pick any given day of our lives and look and see that there was good and there was bad, there was in between, and some days are better than others. But it only serves to tell us that in the midst of it all, regardless of what comes our way, we can trust God. It is God that says he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. And it is God that says, as we just referred to in Romans 8, 28, that he is able to cause all things to work together for our good because we love him, because we are the call according to his purpose. So he's able to use the things that he allows us to face for our good. And of course, you would know one of my favorite verses in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which tells us that he never gives us more than we can handle. But with every temptation, he makes a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. And you know, thinking about it, taking it a little more, the, 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 the thought process a little further, we can think about the fact that in some jurisdictions, in some places in the world, nighttime seems to be longer depending on the season. If you think maybe in, in Alaska, for example, where they have extended night periods. And so in, in some situations, in some circumstances, you can draw a similarity. In some lives, some people may seem to be suffering long and wondering, well, how much longer? But I want to encourage you, if that's you today, you are just one day closer to the end of what you're going through. And even as Job says, when he tries me, I shall come forth as gold. You are one day closer. You are one hour closer to manifesting the gold that God has placed inside of you that is tried by fire, that will be tried by fire. But knowing and understanding that even as you hold on to God, Sometimes it looks like you're coming out bruised and broken and battered, but you're coming out because something inside of you refuses to die. The enemy will not get the victory from your life 
because of what God has done, because of who God is in your life, because the God that you serve is able to prosper you right in the midst of your enemies. The God that you serve is able to bring you through right where people are standing around looking and plotting your demise, right where people are as it will planning your funeral, planning to come around and look and say, oh, but she was a nice girl. Oh, but he did this. Oh, but he did that. But I ask the question, who has the final say? Who is the one that writes the story of your life? No neighbor, no enemy, no devil can defeat what God has established for you. If you are walking in his purposes, if you are walking as God has led you and continues to lead you because that's the God that we serve. He is willing to walk you through so that he will get the glory out of your life. That is why the latter is always so much greater than the past because people will see and know that what you have gone through you could have only come through it. You could have only overcome it. You could have only triumphed in it because of the God that you serve and your willingness to obey him. Sometimes we make it harder for ourselves because we try to lean onto our own understanding and we don't see how it could work and we start to doubt and we get double-minded. And as God says in the book of James, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So I'm encouraging you today to settle because the new day is coming. The new beginning is here as it were. And as you walk into it, I encourage you to open yourself up to the possibilities that God will bring forth to you. For you to take advantage of it and know and allow God to be glorified in the midst of all that he will bring your way. I am not the person that is, you know, into, you know, declaring this is your season to be blessed and everything else. Because different people are going through different things. But I'm saying to you, in the midst of all that you are facing... God is willing to bring you through. God is willing to walk you through. I'm saying you can start rejoicing even now. Because even as you bless the Lord and God pours out the blessings upon you and you continue to return thanks to God, you continue to shine forth that light. God who dwells in the praises of his people will be willing and more than able to show up in the midst of whatever circumstances, whatever situations come your way. And the blessing that we have is to know that regardless of how small, how insignificant we may think we are, Almighty God still looks out for us. There is still nothing that is impossible for him to do for us. There's still nothing that he will not withhold. His word says he will not withhold any good thing from us, even as we walk uprightly. And I'm hearing a mother saying, how much more do I have to put up with this son? I'm hearing a mother asking, how much more? And I'm saying to you today, trust God. Begin to thank God even now for what God will do. I can stand and say, I've seen God turn situations around in some remarkable ways. And I know that the same God yesterday, today is the same God forever. The same God that did it for Moses and David and all the others that we read about in the Bible and draw strength from is the same God that we serve today and I'm saying don't let situations bring you down yes you may get concerned yes it may be depressing at times but don't let it keep you in a place of defeat God did not create you to be defeated 
by the things that he allows to come your way. No one understand that he will march you into a better place. Even as you hold on to his word, even as you hold on to his promises, even as you cry in the midst, the Bible tells us that he comes, to, he knows the tears that we cry. He sees and he is able to store them up. He's able, he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And yet he is still willing and able to bring us through. He is not perturbed by your crying. He is touched by your faith. And he's able to use that faith to, to work marvelously, sorry, in your life, in your situation. You know, I'm, I'm listening to people over the past few weeks and I'm hearing so many persons that have given up on so much because you've been praying for so long and you've been, you know, just doing, believing God and you're praying and you're fasting and you're doing so much and it seems like it's getting worse instead of getting better. And I'm saying to you today, it's a new day. It's a day when you can trust God. It's a day when you can rejoice in God. It's a day when you can look the enemy in the face and say, I know that I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loves me. Hallelujah. Because of what Jesus Christ did. We know that these are perilous times. We know that the Bible spoke about all these different prophecies that come to pass. But I'm saying to us, it is indeed a new day. And with each new day brings new hope. With each new day brings new possibilities. Let us focus on what is possible. Let us focus on the fact that there is nothing that is impossible for God to do. And I'm asking God that you know he would increase faith in all of us. That we can hold on to his word. We can hold on to what he has said to us. Because we know and understand that our God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. So people of God, I am thanking God today. Not because things are perfect, not because things are the way I want them to be, but because I have the privilege of knowing and interacting and serving and praising the one true and living God, the one who has made a way for me and the one who has made a way for you to enjoy eternity with him and the one who has made a way for us to enjoy life more abundantly even right here on planet earth while we wait for the advent of eternity with him. So I'm encouraging you today. Rejoice in the Lord. It's a new day. It's a new time. It's a new season. Let's make the most of what God wants to do in our lives. That through our lives, others may come to know him. Through our lives, others may come to surrender to his will to his way that he will be glorified in every area of the affairs of this life of our communities of our nation by extension we can thank God that every answer that we seek remains in him and so we come with confidence we come with boldness knowing hallelujah that if God be for us who can be against us and that regardless of what the enemy tries, he will not defeat us. He will not have the final say. So as you go throughout today, I just want to thank God for you again and to encourage you to hold on to the promises of God. Hold on and see God with all his power, with all his might, working on your behalf, willing and more than able to work on your behalf for his name's sake. Hallelujah. Trust God today. Hold on to his word. 
Father God, we just thank you for a new day. We just thank you for new hope, new possibilities, newness of life in you. Your word even tells us if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. So even those who are hearing the message and thinking, well, okay, this newness and this new hope doesn't pertain to me because I'm still between two decisions. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would draw them by your spirit, that they would come into the fullness of your saving grace. And, oh God, they would walk in truth before you. Father God, I pray today that you would heal hurting hearts and broken hearts. You will heal mothers, oh God, who have labored to see their children saved, to see their children settled in you. Oh, Father, help them to know that their prayers are not in vain. Their prayers are stored up in vials. You are still the God that is able to answer, oh God, by fire. You are able to answer in whichever way you see possible. Father, oh God, help our hope. And our every confidence to remain in you, not in man, O oh God. You said it is better to trust in you than to put our confidence in man. And so, God, even now, as I commit your people into your hands, I pray in the name of Jesus that they would continue to draw close to you. They would continue to draw strength from you. And they would allow you to be glorified in their lives. We cover them with the blood of Jesus and we cover T-I-N, O oh God, with the blood of Jesus. Use this medium, O oh God, for your honor and glory and take us from strength to strength for your name's sake. Father God, I thank you and I honor you. I say, God, have your way with us in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. Trust in God forever. Hold on to his word and his promises. Amen.